and today we're talking about clamshell mittens. Now, before I can talk about these, the clamshell mittens, and why they are the best form of protection for anybody doing fighting, whether it be Armored Combat League, whether it be Society of Creative Anachronism, or HEMA, I'm going to talk a little bit of history about these. But before I can get into these, I need to talk about what came before. And another good set of gauntlets to use, fingered gauntlets. Now, if there's any one thing to take away from this whole video, there's one point to make about why mittens and the history of mittens outpaces that of uh, gauntlets like these. And that is armor protection, safety. You know, we wear armor like this to protect our hands. I'm not going to wear a normal glove while I'm fighting. I'm going to wear something like this. And that's what they discovered back in the day. And before I can get really in depth into that portion, let me talk a little bit about these. So in the high late portion of the high medieval age, going into the late medieval age, we start to see finger gauntlets. Um, there's another set. Um, I'll post a picture of that have like a, a dozen pieces of... Uh, of metal per finger or so like that. They're scaled fingers. Um, these sets have uh, five um, pieces per, uh, per finger. Still, that's quite a few pieces. But it's general uh, rule of thumb with pretty much everything medieval. As time continues on, we go from small pieces of armor, like chain mail and chain mail mittens and padding and leather, to eventually going towards plate and full plate, um, but uh, but yeah, they're, these are really maneuverable, flexible. I can do all sorts of stuff. I can bend my pinky back. I can give somebody the bird in the middle of the battle. Fantastic. But as they just they discovered back in the day, and as the point I'm trying to make here, unneeded. That maneuverability, that much, this much maneuverability, for the most part, is really unneeded. I don't need to bend my finger backwards. I don't need to really give somebody the bird in the middle of the battle. I mean, I don't really need that stuff. I need protection. And so when we start seeing um, the 1400s, the middle of the 1400s, we start to see a transitional piece of armor where they look very similar like these gauntlets, but the demi-gauntlet portion where these rivets are, starts to extend out and over around the knuckles to cover more and more. Eventually, they form into the clamshells that we have and know. Now this one particular, I'm going to zoom in on this, you see this right here, this dent right here. That is from a two-handed longsword, full swing, full force right at my hand and I was able to block it quite comfortably too because I have about an inch of padding under this before I get to the padding I'm going to get back to this um, but it's fantastic protection and it's all because of one concept we, we wear armor to protect ourselves otherwise we wouldn't wear it hence why there's no well I guess you could say there's not there is still armor today but there's not knights in shining armor anymore Gunpowder came around and made that obsolete. But concept is finger gauntlet. Fantastic protection, maneuverability. I can do all that stuff I was talking about before. All that stuff I don't need. Because let's say I got my mace. And John the farmer, this guy's Falchon out. Wait for this thing to zoom in. And he comes swinging at my hand. And it hits me. You can see that. You zoom in. My ring finger, this finger right here, just took the full force of this hefty couple pounds of metal here, getting swung at that one finger. Oh, that's broken. You don't need to cut it. It's broken. Or a common one, another common one. Swing at my weapon, sword, mace, whatever it may be, straight down to my hand. I mean, hence why we have a cross guard, but hand still happens. You know, getting hit on the top of your hands still happens. And my pointer finger, 
and a little bit of my thumb just took the full force of that blow. But let's say I'm wearing my clamshells. I'm going to put this on right now. Instead of that one finger taking the whole blow, I get swung like I did at the long sword. Oh, right, right in there, right where that long sword landed. This whole one piece of metal absorbs that shock, that blow, that kinetic energy. And that's the big portion of this video is how they discovered that back in the day in historical terms as, you know, fighting. You being able to have one entire piece absorb the blow is a lot better than just one, you know, your one finger. And you don't need that maneuverability to hold the sword. You don't need that much maneuverability. I can still grab stuff with this. I can still reach down and whatnot. And, you know, maybe not tie my shoes, but you know, uh, grab a latch on a door or something like that, or a piece of rope. Now, that's a historical aspect and the point I want to make. With these, I bought these off of uh, Brooks, um, uh, uh, Cat Brooks. Um, he's a retailer for a lot of the armored stuff. Cool guy. Um, fantastic. These are actually pretty cheap. And oddly enough, you'll find mittens like these a lot cheaper than you go with finger gauntlets. Um, and honestly, it's you know safer. Because economically speaking, logistically speaking also, it's easier just to make this than it is the finger gauntlets. Because you know, in today's day and age, it's sort of reversed about what it was back in the day. It's easier to get a piece of one big piece of metal cut out what you need, whereas back in the day it was more efficient to make that one piece of metal, cost-wise. So, but um, I have about an inch of padding. Uh, just see, get me closer there. Um, and I put that right under my knuckles. I can effectively, and I have with these, if I can grab it properly. I can punch block a two-handed full swing longsword, as seen, and not just that one blow, but multiple blows across my knuckles here. If I was wearing my finger gauntlets, I'm not going to be able to do anything with this hand anymore. Yeah, you, as they discovered back in the day with the medieval age, you don't need sharp cutting weapons anymore to damage somebody in armor. You just need that shock force, that kinetic energy to be able to transfer through to their body. Hence why you start seeing war hammers, this is for SCA, um, and maces, and then piercing weapons also like uh, huge sword, long swords that don't even have a blade, they just come to a fine point. And so that's a general rule of thumb that starts to develop as we uh, start to get into the, uh, uh, me uh, the later medieval ages because well, the more and more people are wearing armor, more hammers and whatnot, maces and other flails and devices are going to start coming out to counter that, uh, that weapon approach. It's always, it's always the back and forth between armor and then the weapons. You get, the armor, you get weapons that are really good, then you get armor that's really good, then you get weapons that are really good, and then you get armor that's really good, and it goes back and forth. And, you know, there's really not that one all overall when it comes to medieval stuff. That one overall save all be all. There's always going to be cracks and crevices um, to get through. But as I discovered back in the day, as I'm trying to make my point now, clamshell gauntlets are the best gauntlets, safety wise, the most often price point wise, to go with. Now, in Armor Combat League, they restrict the time frame to. 13, 14, 1500s. Uh, and you really have to really narrow down your view to which area you want to be. If you're an SCA, you're doing a Roman impression and you pick clamshell gauntlets, wait a minute, you know, type of thing. They didn't have clamshells until the, really the late 1400s start coming about. And the 1500s start to take over the number one spot over regular finger gauntlets. Finger gauntlets are still around. But clamshell street, you definitely see it become more apparent. Um, but overall, uh, if you're a Roman soldier or you're um, somebody from the Dark Ages, portraying from the Dark Ages, then you can't really get away with it. 
Um, but SCA is SCA. Um, you still need finger protection as you do in the Arbor Combat League. And you're just going to have to go with something a little bit of a flavor um, to uh, combine it with your kit. Because when it comes to your fighting kit, of course, as I mentioned before in the previous episodes, mentioned again here, your helmet and your gauntlets are usually going to be the most two p expensive pieces of armor. And in this case, with the gauntlets, you can get cost-effective and effective in the battlefield all in one. Clamshells. They're really the way to go. And so... Um, that's a little bit of the uh, video on the clamshells. And now that I am out of my final exams with my business management going forward, I'm going to try to do, I'm going to do at least at least three videos a week. Um, I'll try to bump those numbers up to five to seven. Um, but overall, um, I'll also be doing another video on holy orders and some of the little bit about the crusades. But um, going forward, actually, I'm thinking about doing a weapons video. I have a bunch of weapons, both for SCA and Armor Combat League. And I do have a very nice pole arm coming in, which I uh, can't wait to use. Um, but overall, the moral of the story is the clamshells are the way to go. Safety-wise, um, cost-effective-wise, and even, you know, if you're a little bit savvy with being able to create stuff yourself, they're actually pretty easy to make. Um, you know, I'll show these again. Um, essentially, this right here is three three plates of armor right here, bent around the edges a little bit, with one, two rivets, another two rivets, four rivets right there, and then one, two, three pieces of metal right here with additional rivets. Um, so that's just some metal bending and some rivet doing. And then if you want to, uh, of course, you're going to need some sort of way um, to put your leather uh, straps in. Again, rivets, way to go. Um, but if you're an SCA, you can get away with some like really thick leather gauntlets and riveting them. But, yeah, they are the way to go. They're easy. They're peasy. All in one, good to go. Clamshell gauntlets. But, um. And there we are. But uh, until next time, keep it easy, keep it easy. I'll catch you then.